Jackie was an icon even in her own time, and she was worshipped and adored as if she were a movie star. Jackie Kennedy saw her role as establishing the White House as a beacon for arts and culture. She was born Jacqueline Lee Bovier on July 28, 1929, in Southampton, New York. She was the child of privilege. They grew up in New York and summered in all the right places. She went to Farmington, which is a girls' school in Connecticut, and then went to Vassar, and then studied in France at the Sorbonne. Jackie was a skilled writer and took an interest in journalism following her education. Jackie could have had a brilliant career as a fashion journalist. In 1951, she won Vogue magazine's Prix de Paris, which was a writing contest with a prize of an internship in Paris. But her mother wouldn't let her go. In 1952, Jackie met U.S. Representative John Kennedy at a dinner party of a mutual friend. Jack was an aspiring politician, and she was beautiful, and she was charming and elegant and well-educated. So I think on paper, she was the perfect partner for him, as well as in person. They were married in September of the following year at St. Mary's Church in Newport, Rhode Island. The transition to a life as a politician's wife was not easy for Jackie. She wasn't a particularly political person. She hated campaigning. She didn't like to be out in a lot of crowds. She was not by his side the way some wives are today on the campaign trail. In 1960, John F. Kennedy defeated Richard Nixon in a close election. Jackie immediately set out to revitalize the culture of the White House. Jackie Kennedy had a sense of style and she applied it uh, to the White House. Jackie always had lots of celebrities and glamorous people, and she always had great entertainment. It was just a whole different scene. Jackie's sense of personal style made her a darling to the media and an icon to American women. Kennedy was the youngest American president, and instead of trying to look older and more distinguished, he and Jackie really flaunted their youth. Women were extremely admiring of her style and her sense of fashion and her glamour. Jackie's popularity extended far beyond the borders of the United States. She brought a level of travel and training and education to the White House that we really hadn't seen before. She charmed all of the world leaders. She was very sophisticated and she knew how to handle herself socially. In 1963, the assassination of President John F. Kennedy brought a tragic end to Jackie's time in the White House. And John John celebrates his third birthday with a soldier's farewell to his father. The assassination of Robert Kennedy in June of 1968 made Jackie fear for the safety of her children. She moved to Greece and married a wealthy shipping magnate named Aristotle Onassis. I don't think it was a very happy time. She was married to this man who married her because he wanted a trophy wife, and she married him because she wanted the money and the protection. After her second husband's death in 1975, Jackie returned to the States and to her passion of the publishing industry. She was a respected editor and she knew what she was doing. She could walk around New York and edit books, but people always found her rather unapproachable. There was always a sense of tragedy around her. Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis died on May 19th, 1994. She was 64.